Hi friends, welcome to Learn Entomology. I am your Senthil Raja. Actually, in our entomology, there are lot of topics. But I have chosen this embryonic development because whenever anybody asks you, where are you coming from? What might be your answer? You can say your village name. Otherwise, your district name. Otherwise, your state name. Otherwise, your country name. But as a biologist, he must remember that we all are came from an embryo. Okay. This is a reason for my first video as an embryonic development in insects. Okay. Let's move on to the topic. What is an embryo? An embryo is nothing but unborn or unhatched offspring that is in the process of development is called embryo. In easy terms, I can say that embryo is nothing but it is a mature zygote. Okay? Then what is embryogenesis? Embryogenesis. What is an embryo? It is a mature zygote and genesis in the sense generation. How an embryo is formed is called embryogenesis. It is the process of formation and the development of an embryo. There are three steps in embryonic development. The first one is pre-embryonic development. Okay, how an psychot is developed from an gamete is called pre-embryonic development. And the second one is embryonic development. How a zygot develops into an embryo, which all steps comes under an embryonic development and the post-embryonic development. Okay, how an embryo develops into a individual organism is called post embryonic development. Okay, in this video, we are going to see only about pre embryonic development and the embryonic development. The post embryonic development will be covered in the next video. Okay, first one the pre embryonic development. Okay. The female gametes are called as the oocytes or eggs, while the gametes produced by the males are called as the spermatozoa or the sperms. Okay. Then the fertilization, the process of fusion of the male and the female gametes to form a zygote is called as fertilization. Okay. And then the formed zygote divides mitotically to produce all of the different cells that comprises the body of a nymph in case of the except or hemipetamolous species or larvae in the case of endopterygote or holometabolous species which will hatch from an egg. Okay. Most of the insects are oviparous in nature. So it is important for us to know about the structure and the components of insect egg. Here you can see a structure of the typical insect egg. Okay. From the outer side you can see, see a hardened egg cell. It is also known as chorion. Okay. This chorion is secreted by cells of the follicular epithelium of the ovary and it is composed of lipoproteins. Okay and chitin is absent in the insect egg shell okay whenever you are going to attempt an competitive exams on entomology there must be compulsorily a question from an insect egg they might be asked that the insect egg shell is composed of which substance okay in the options definitely there is a protein okay the protein is the answer for that question okay and then in the anterior or top side of this typical leg, you can see a single hole. Okay, this is called micropyle. Okay, the spermatozoa enters through the micropyle to fertilize the ovum. Okay, besides this use, this micropyle can also serve as a respiratory channel. Okay, and then the third one is cytoplasm. It is the living substance of an egg. You can see that cytoplasm. The nucleus is floating inside an cytoplasm. 
okay and then the vitelline membrane or the cell wall it is a delicate membrane completely lining the egg shell from inner side which encloses the cytoplasm okay you can see that outer membrane is egg shell inside this outer membrane you can see a thin membrane this membrane is called vitelline membrane okay and then yolk or a gutoplasm it is the non living or lifeless substance of an egg which consists of carbohydrates proteins and lipids scattered as globules throughout the reticulum of the cytoplasm okay and then the nucleus it is highly organized dynamic part of an egg containing chromatin which forms the chromosomes these are composed of large number of gant molecules of deoxyribonucleic acid which are the genes the bearers of hereditary characters okay one is the embryonic development after the egg is fertilized it undergoes a period of rapid growth and development to form embryo known as embryogenesis okay steps in embryogenesis the first one is cleavage second one establishment of germline or plastoderm formation the third one is germ analog or germ disc formation and the fourth one gastrulation and segmentation and the fifth one formation of embryonic membranes okay the first one is cleavage cleavage is nothing but division okay here you can see a cycloid cell that undergoes a series of mitotic divisions okay this series of mitotic division will leads to increased number of the smaller cells okay the smaller cells have nucleus and hollow cytoplasm okay there are two types of cleavage the first one is holoblastic cleavage and the second one is meroblastic or superficial cleavage okay first one holoblastic cleavage the insects like columbola and the parasitic hymenoptera which has isolecithal type of x isolecithal is nothing but the yolk is sparse or evenly distributed in the cytoplasm of the ovum okay you can see the holoblastic cleavage here here the whole cell is dividing okay and then the meroblastic or superficial cleavage okay it occurs in most of the insects okay uh, for your easy understanding i am saying that uh, the chicken egg is the central epithelial egg okay in this type of cleavage the yolk is present in the center of the egg okay then it starts dividing you can see the difference between the holoblastic cleavage and the meroblastic cleavage here okay second one establishment of the germ line or the blastoderm formation okay in previous slide we seen that there is a formation of the cleavage cells okay and the cleavage nuclei which is also called as the energets which migrate towards the periphery of the egg okay here you can see that the cleavage cell migrates to the periphery of the egg okay and then it arranges in a layer of circle within a yolk okay and then these energies undergo repeated mitotic division and forms a continuous layer of cells called blastoderm okay you can see that that blastoderm in this typical egg okay and then third one germ analog or the germ disc formation okay the energies which remain in the yolk are returned to it after reaching the periphery of the egg are called vitellophages okay in some insects like diptera these blastoderm cells migrate to the center forming the secondary vitellophages okay this vitellophages is an important question it can be asked in any competitive exams regarding entomology okay and then this blastoderm becomes thicker due to repeated cell divisions in the ventral region of the egg forming gem band which later develops into embryo you can see here that ventral region is thickened okay this is called as the germ band okay 
then the regional differentiation of the blastoderm leads to the formation of germ analog or the germ disc the fourth one is gastrulation and segmentation gastrulation is nothing but the process by which mesoderm and endoderm are invaginated within the ectoderm okay it is the embryonic stage which involves the formation of germinal layers in other way, words we can say that single layered germ analog becomes two layered through the invagination and proliferation of cells along the midline okay and the one is the formation of embryonic membranes okay the blastoderm cells that do not participate in the formation of germ band differentiate into an extra embryonic membrane okay what is an extra embryonic membrane it is nothing but the thin protective membranes formed on the periphery of the embryo is called extra embryonic membrane okay thus the blastoderm cells that do not participate in the formation of the germ band differentiate into an extra embryonic membrane called serosa okay in addition there is a second membrane called amnion which develops shortly after the formation of serosa from cells adjacent to the germ band okay and then amnion or analog cells differentiate at the periphery of the germ band and it becomes flattened as they extend over the ventral region to form the second embryonic envelope which is called as the amnion okay the next one differentiation of protocephalon and protocom it is also known as pyriform shaped stage okay the protocephalon is nothing but it is an expanded anterior region or the cephalic lobes which forms a sort of early embryonic head okay and then the protocom is nothing but it is a posterior trunk like region of germ band okay the germ band continues to grow anteriorly and the posteriorly okay and simultaneously the central part becomes much narrower as a result it assumes a pyriform shape so it is called pyriform shaped stage okay it is possible to distinguish protocephalon from the protocom in this stage and then the blastokinesis the movement of embryo within the egg is called blastokinesis it includes anatopsis and catatopsis catatopsis is nothing but the movement taking place from ventral surface of the egg to dorsal surface of the egg you can see that the arrow mark shows that that yellow portion you consider it as an embryo okay the movement of this yellow portion from the ventral surface to the dorsal surface is called catatopsis and then the anatopsis it is nothing but the movement taking place from posterior to the anterior pole of the egg okay here also you consider this yellow portion from the posterior side to the anterior pole last but not the least we are on the important topic of the embryogenesis the origin of different organs and the systems okay we all know that the midgut is endodermal in origin there is no chitinous layer okay in the midgut okay and then the heart blood circulatory system endocrine glands fat body and gonads are mesodermal in origin okay and then the epidermis exocrine glands brain nervous system sense organs foregut hindgut respiratory system and external genitalia are ectodermal in origin okay here a one doubt is arising that here you can see that the external genitalia it belongs to the reproductive system and then in mesoderm you see that the gonads ovaries and testes they also belong to the reproductive system okay in exam if the question is asked uh, the reproductive system is of das origin what you write definitely the answer is the mesodermal in origin okay i hope you all understood today's topic 
thank you my dear friends like and subscribe to learn entomology and contact me at learnentomology@gmail.com at